Oh, that's right, baby. J Rock is here. It is time for the most electrifying movie review in all of YouTube Tain Mint, simply known as J Rock's. Movie versus trailer. Oh, well, J Rock will answer the question for Thor Love and Thunder. Which one he thought was better, the movie or the trailer? The answer might surprise you. Hi, J Rock has come back to you too. What is happening in 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 with the millions? And millions of J-Rock fans from all over the world, baby, J-Rock is here. And we got ourselves the most electrifying movie review in all of YouTube tainment. J-Rock's movie versus trailer review. We will go through the trailer. We will see what's happening in the trailer and see if it matches what was happening in the movie. Or if they were trying to hit us with the okie doke to sell us on the movie. All right? J-Rock says this. Make sure you go back and check all the other movie versus trailer reviews that are up on the Great Ones channel right now. All the way back to Godzilla versus King Kong, uh, Doctor Strange 2, and many more. Batman, uh, and many others, right? Make sure you go and check those out. But we're not going to waste no time. Let's get started with Thor, Love, and Thunder. All right, so let's start it out here. This this part is this is right at the beginning, pretty much. Kids, get your popcorn now. Let me tell you the story of the space viking, Thor Odinson. Yeah, he was no right. ordinary man. He was a god. After saving planet Earth for the 500th time, Thor set off on a new journey. When he got in shape, yeah, right. he yeah. went from dad bod to god bod. And after all that, he reclaimed his title. All right, so J-Rock says this, right here in the movie, uh, this is towards the beginning, inching a little towards the middle of the movie. There's this battle that Thor is called in to participate in, and um, he lays the smack down. Well, actually, let me back up for a second. Asgard, or the new Asgard, is under attack. Thor shows up to uh, help, see what's going on, help out. And then, this is right after Jane, has been diagnosed with stage four cancer. And so she begins to investigate to see how to treat it. She comes across um, Asgard, reads about Mjolnir and how it can give her health and that sort of thing. And you'll see that the reason that she's able to will Mjolnir is because Thor tells Mjolnir to always protect her. And because of that, you know, Mjolnir calls to Jane Foster and then she goes Picks up Milner, Milner comes back together. Doesn't matter how or why, it comes back together. She wills Milner and she is in great physical health, pristine. Only problem is that every time she picks up Milner and uses it, the her fragile life form is just starting to deplete, all right? And so, yeah, that's what happens with her. But she uses it and it helps her, it helps her, you know, in the moment with the cancer. But yeah, ultimately, at the end, uh, they end up. She ends up dying because cancer. Just she just can't survive Milner with the cancer and that sort of thing. And so she wills Milner comes in and attacks. Help! This is when they reconnect and rekindle. As the one and only Thor. Oh, spoke too soon. Jane. girlfriend yeah this right here is at the end so what's happening here is that she has been wielding Mjolnir the stage four cancer has accelerated because she's wielding Mjolnir left and right and laying the smack down all right she's laying in the hospital bed Thor has to go and finish off the rescue mission of some kids that were taken hostage all right and so he goes rescues them Thor is actually in a little bit of trouble if you will um with what 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 what's the name of uh uh, uh the, the final boss that is correct it does not matter what his name is <laughs> exactly so j-rock says um she shows up thor told her look i got it don't worry about it i'm gonna handle this i'm gonna be right back but unfortunately you know things get a little out of hand thor's in a little bit of trouble and jane defies what 
you know, Thor told her to do or asked her to do. She picks up Mjolnir for the last time. This is right at the end of the movie. And she helps out Thor to, um, um, you know, win the final battle, rescue the kids and everything else. But unfortunately for her, it would be the last time that she picked up Mjolnir as her life force would be drained. What's it been like? Three, four years? <laughs> Eight years, seven months, right and six days. Give or take. My uh, sensing feelings. <laughs> so what happens here is the story is told about you know, obviously, excuse me, how they met in the first Thor movie, and then uh, all the way through um, Ragnarok. But the story is told about how she and Thor they were together but they were both afraid of being hurt, afraid that it wouldn't last, so they drifted apart. Ultimately, she writes Thor a letter, breaks up with him, right? They don't see each other again. Then, of course, you know, the Thanos snap uh, happened. She's gone. Uh, he's still there. They come back. They reconnect. And they've been broken up for all these years, but then they see each other again, and, you know, the, the flames start burning one more again. Well, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> The only ones who gods care about is themselves. I'll give my opinion on this So this is my vow. All gods will die. So, right at the beginning, the movie starts out, starts out with Gore, daughter is dying. And he, you know, seeks the gods for help to heal her. They don't help out. And so... Um, he gets the sword, can't think of the name of it, doesn't matter, you guys know, but he gets this sword that grants him the power to kill the gods. And so since they wouldn't save his daughter, he vows, I'm going to kill every god there is. And so he sets off on his mission, and of course Thor being the god of thunder, you know, other gods, you know, he, they clash. You know. I was gonna say that was very, very impressive what you did back there. So this part right here, they are seeking out the help of the gods. And there is this place where all the gods go um, and they are led by the mighty Zeus, you know, God of the heavens, if you will. And they seek Zeus uh, for his help and helping them out. Of course, Zeus says no and Thor ends up using Zeus's thunderbolt. At first, I thought he killed him, but actually, he just wounded him. And he takes the thunderbolt with him to help him defeat Gore. So, that's basically what's happening here. It's just my first bad guy. You never forget your first. All right, see, this this, this is what's happening right here. Y'all see this part right here? This is one of the reasons why J Rock does his movie versus trailer movie. See, this part right here where Gore slams down his sword, gave J-Rock the impression, I don't know about you, that he caused this to happen right here. You see how the, you know, the, you know, the electricity, well, actually, that was J-Rock waking up this morning, but neither here nor there. But what happened in this scene isn't, you know, Gore slamming the sword down. This is actually right towards the end um, where, um, Thor has called Stormbreaker uh, to him because Gore wants to use Stormbreaker to open the gate to, I think it's called the Attorney or whatever, doesn't matter what his name is. He uses it to, you know, wants to use it to open the gate. J-Rock says that's not what's happening right here, okay? This shot right here with thunder and everything right there, that is actually Thor holding Stormbreaker and just boom, doing that. So they, you know, threw that in there. You never forget your first. Yeah, you, I'm not like the other guns that I've killed. Because I have something worth fighting for. Let's see who you are. I take off your disguise. And flip! 
Oh, you flipped too hard, damn it! Should we help him? I mean, eventually, great. That was at the beginning. So, J Rock says this um, quick and to the point overview of the trailer. Not a whole lot of uh, hidden secrets in the trailer that they were putting in the trailer that wasn't in the movie. Um, the trailer was pretty straightforward, as was the movie. J Rock says this to answer the question which one he thought was better, the movie or the trailer? J Rock says he was excited about the movie when he saw the trailer. But if he had to pick one, which one he thought was better, he'd have to say the trailer was better than the movie. Again, not to say that the movie was bad, the movie was good, it was entertaining, J-Rock enjoyed it, but it just didn't live up to the hype set by the trailer. The trailer hyped this thing up, and here's the thing. I think we've gotten past Thor being the, you know, the funny, you know, comedic type movie. Thor and Ragnarok, they did that very, very well. But this one, J-Rock says they overdid it with the comedy and, you know, the sort of the parody-ish feel of the movie, right? And usually in a, um, you think about Avengers Endgame, you think about Avengers Age of Ultron or, or Avengers Infinity War, or well, hell, even the first Avengers with Loki, right? More so, I would say, with Thanos than anything else. J-Rock says... One of the things that those movies all had in common was that there was this feeling of a threat. Like, can they overcome this challenge? How are they gonna overcome this challenge, right? The heroes are in trouble, especially from Infinity War to Endgame. They are in trouble, they need help, all right? They cannot overcome this threat. Didn't get that feeling in this movie at all. Not even a little bit. Gore felt like no threat to me whatsoever. Felt like a psycho, grabbed some kids, and it was only a matter of time before Thor got him back. There was no threat. This movie was, it felt more like a, um, a sitcom without the canned laughter, if you will. All right? And so, J-Rock says, the movie was good, still enjoyed it. It was still a good movie, just didn't live up to the hype. Oh, and J-Rock's opinion on Gore, I think I just said it, he didn't feel like a threat at all, all right? He felt more like a sympathetic figure than this dark force. Like, well, his daughter died, so now he's gonna kill all the gods. Like, well, who wouldn't want some revenge if you had somebody that was able to help you and wouldn't help you on, like, he felt more like a sympathetic figure than he did an actual threat. So J-Rock says, um, with that being said, J-Rock would have to say that the trailer was better than the movie. Still a good movie. Just didn't live up to the hype that J-Rock was expecting. Now, what say you? Which one you th think was better, the movie or the trailer? Did the movie live up to the hype that you were expecting? Did it exceed the hype and why? J-Rock wants to know, all right? Post your comments down below. Let J-Rock know which is always reaction in this video. No rhyme intended on that line. If you enjoyed the great one's reaction, hit that like button, subscribe, and share. Be sure to hit that bell so you can be notified when it is time to be electrified. Thank you for joining J-Rock. Stay tuned for my next video. Mamba, Gigi, and Wakanda forever. If you smell how well, J-Rock is cooking.